Hello, Temple friends. We're back with episode 14 of the podcast after taking a brief pause. I'd like to thank so many of you for watching our live Easter sunrise service along with our pre-recorded service on Easter Sunday. Thank you to all of those who shared encouraging words about those services as well. I appreciate your kind words and also the simple joy of interacting with another person. It's easy to get to feeling cooped up these days, and even though we don't get to be in each other's presence, it's nice to be able to be with each other in whatever way we can. Today we're going to hear an Old Testament passage from Joshua. And even though this episode is coming out on Wednesday, we are going to hear Tuesday's epistle passage from the lectionary, just in case you're keeping track at home. First, let's hear from Joshua chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 and 14 through 17. Early in the morning, Joshua rose and set out from Shittim with all the Israelites, and they came to the Jordan. They camped there before crossing over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place. Follow it, so that you may know the way you should go, for you have not passed this way before. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, a distance of about 2,000 cubits. Do not come any nearer to it. Then Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. To the priests, Joshua said, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on in front of the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went in front of the people. When the people set out from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant were in front of the people. Now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest. So when those who bore the ark had come to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests bearing the ark were dipped in the edge of the water, the waters flowing from above stood still, rising up in a single heap far off at Adam, the city that is beside Zarethan. While those flowing toward the Sea of Arabah, the Dead Sea, were wholly cut off. Then the people crossed over opposite Jericho. While all Israel were crossing over on dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. And now we'll hear from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Paul writes, As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The past week or so has been difficult for me. As those of you from Temple's congregation know, and as many of our other Temple friends know as well, I have two jobs, pastor and one-on-one aide in a local school. I love them both. Like most everyone else, I'm now working from home. But neither one of my jobs is meant to be done from home. In fact, in-person human contact is essential to both of them, and I've been feeling the lack of that 
the last few days. Our current crisis has pointed out to me just how much of my affection and appreciation for those two careers is based on the human contact that is essential to them. I've had jobs before that I didn't love, and I now realize that maybe the main reason I didn't love them was that they didn't require much, if any, contact with other people. For example, I've worked in a warehouse or two, and for the postal service. There were co-workers and customers in each of those jobs, but contact and interaction with them was not important in either one. I know that sounds hard to believe with respect to the postal service, but trust me, most of a mail carrier's job is done in isolation, even if you're in a room with a bunch of other people. I miss being in the same place with other people whom I love. We don't have to be handshaking or hugging or anything like that. I just miss being with people. I especially miss working with a team of people I like and appreciate to make something good happen. But I was looking at that Colossians passage that we heard a couple of minutes ago. What is Paul telling his beloved friends, from whom, by the way, he was separated and not willingly? What is he telling them in these verses? Exercise compassion humility, patience, and kindness. Forgive each other if there are complaints. Most of all, love one another. As much as I wish to be with other people at this time, none of those things that Paul talks about, let's call them Christian best practices, none of those things requires in-person interaction. What I mean is there are lots of ways to keep doing those things even while we're kept from being with each other in person. In fact, our forced separation is no excuse at all for stopping doing those things. On the contrary, it is the reason why I must, we all must, be as vigilant as ever to make the effort to clothe ourselves with love in everything we do. I don't know how much of what I'm feeling applies to you personally, but I'd be willing to bet that at least one or two of you listening to this are feeling at least a little bit of what I've described. If that's the case, then this next thought is especially for you and me. There is every indication that we're going to continue experiencing this enforced separation for a fair few days yet. For you and I, there is a need to be creative in finding ways to express our Christian best practices, to clothe ourselves with the love of Christ without being with those we love in person. It means finding ways to bridge the emotional and spiritual distance, even when we can't bridge the physical distance. It can be done. I'd love to hear about ways you've already found to express the love of Christ to brothers and sisters while you're apart. I'd also like to hear your creative ideas for doing that in the days and weeks ahead. I may steal some of them. If you're listening via Facebook, leave them in the comments. If you don't use Facebook, you can always email me at templeumc at comcast.net. Let's pray. Lord of love, thank you for the words that Paul wrote to his friends. Thank you for the encouragement he gave to them and gives to us to keep on clothing ourselves with love, the love of your risen Son, Jesus. We pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to show us ways that we can do that even when we are kept apart. And we do pray, Lord, that you will hasten the day when we can safely come together again to rejoice together over your provision for us. We know that day will come. While we wait, Lord, we rest in the knowledge that you knew our needs before we did, and that you are already working to meet them, that you will provide. Thank you for loving us and for setting us free in Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for virtually joining me today. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this. It is one of the ways that I am trying to continue to express care and compassion to my friends. I hope you will share your ways and ideas so we can all benefit from the shared wisdom of God's people. 
Until next time, grace and peace to all.